your brother and servant, Ras Michael Ra'a, with our Rastafari Yoga, where we testify and affirm of an intimate union with the Almighty, along with the disciplines, the principles, and the practices that affirm that intimate union, as we seek to link back our individual consciousness with Christ consciousness, so that we can promote fullness and the wholeness which we have deserved done to us, truly being children of His salvation, His revelation, and His glory. So when we testify of the fullness and the wholeness, we love to promote this Rastafari Yoga. And remember, when we consider yoga, it's not a spirituality, it's not a religion, it's not a belief system, but it is a process in which we use to integrate the fullness of our being, integrating the body with the mind and the spirit. And we use that same process which was developed by the ancients. And most don't know that yoga was originally developed in the Kemetic region, in the Ethiopian region, along the rivers of the Nile. And that knowledge spread far to the east and far to the west and has now come and gone all around the world. And most consider and think of yoga as some type of simple, uh, extravagant way of stretching or, or, or seeking health. But we have to realize that it's a higher quality of life that is revealed through the yogic system. And remember, when we understand yoga, we are simply seeking to integrate our body, our mind, and our spirit to promote that intimate relationship that we have with the Almighty. For truly we have revealed of, truly we have received of His Holy Spirit and it dwells within us. And we want to be receptive to that Holy Spirit. We don't want to constrict that Holy Spirit, okay? We don't want to, we don't want to hinder that Holy Spirit's activity within our being. We want to free it up and give it full range of motion within us, okay? We want to truly make sure that we are not a hindrance to the work of the Almighty within our mortal being, okay? And when we begin to understand yoga from that perspective, we can draw a deeper understanding of how to use it and how to share that knowledge with others to help them understand how to promote health, happiness, and holiness. For these are truly have to be found together. For where you have not found health, you will not find happiness. Where you have not found happiness, you will not find holiness. These three are dependent upon each other. They are part of uh, a co-equal uh, co nature of our being, just as the co-equal nature of our being is body, mind, and spirit. Remember that mind is the soul, which represents your character, your, your, your intentions, uh, uh, your affections, uh, your intellect, your reasoning, all of those things are revealed through your soul. So we want to talk about integrating those things, all right? And we want to testify of our holy sacrament and its correlation to the breath. And most don't understand the deep correlation between the herb and, and the breath. But all of yoga, the, yoga, the yogic systems were developed from them studying this holy herb and the, 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 the age in which mankind utilized this holy earth and promoted a golden age. And that's what we want to testify of being truly those who are from the beginning, all right? Remember, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. With us being blessed with that new name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Isis Lassie the First. We receive all of that that was given to our ancients. We receive that ancient knowledge. We receive the history and the mystery of that which is being foretold and revealed upon those who lost their heritage. And it's now being returned sevenfold. So as we seek to testify uh, of this intimate union with the Almighty, we also have a responsibility to testify of uh, all the righteousness, all the works, and all the uh, useful knowledge that was shared unto mankind through the ancients. And we want to appropriate that knowledge and make it useful. Remember Christ said that he sent us to reap from which we have not sown, okay? And remember our ancient brothers have sown this knowledge of the yogic system. So we want to reap of it, okay? So when we understand the use of the herb, the herb was first studied by those in the, 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 the Kemetic Nile region. And the things they recognize from this herb is how it helped to integrate, to integrate the body and the mind. And it integrated the body and the mind through the blessing of the breath. Now, interestingly enough, when we consider the Hebraic language, when we consider God's word, we realize that there is no difference between the word breath, the word spirit, and the word wind. Okay, so in the Hebraic language, God's language and tongue, he recognized no difference between wind, breath, 
and spirit. So we have to understand that these are all three different densities of the same singularity. And that is revealed in God's word. So when we begin to understand the way in which that spirit, that breath, that wind works within us, it gives us a sense of responsibility to, to, to apprehend that spirit so that it can help us to sustain our, our being, being body, mind, and spirit. And when they're fully integrated, we have a heightened sense of health, uh, a higher awareness, and uh, just a, a greater quality of life in which we can promote health, happiness, and holiness. So, as I mentioned before, the yogics and all of the ancients originally came into yoga through studying marijuana, through the use of this herb, which developed a relationship with mankind. Remember, in the ancient times, man had a great relationship with all the trees and all the plants of the earth, okay? We had a, we had a very well-working relationship with them because, as we read in Genesis, it testifies that all of the plants bearing fruit, bearing seed, were given unto us for meat. So we had intimate relationships with all of the greenery and the vegetation of the earth, which provided for us sustenance. And in having that intimate relationship with all the sustenance provided by the plants and the trees of the earth, naturally we became into an intimate relationship with this specific tree, which uh, in the ancient times was considered the tree of wisdom, the tree of knowledge, the tree of understanding, okay? And it's also esoterically revealed as the same tree that, 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 that brought about that, that, that mental change within Adam and Eve in which they began to recognize that they were naked. Once being naked, now their, their consciousness was expanded and having the ability to know the difference between good and evil. So that was first recognized and corresponding to the relationship of man with a plant, okay? And the Bible testifies of that, that that change within mankind came because of our relationship with a plant. So let's take that knowledge and let's bless ourselves according to what has been sown by the ancients, all right? So we see here that the body, mind, and the spirit are different densities of the same singularity. So just as we understand the, the, uh, just as we understand the element water, H2O, two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom, creates water, right? All right, but there are three separate densities of that one singularity being uh, in its solid state, ice, in its liquid state, water, in its gaseous state, vapor, okay? See how these three singularities, these three uh, different densities represent the same singularity? same way as our being with our body our mind and our spirit all operating within uh, co-equal unity and we want to promote that co-equal unity only through 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 integrating the mind the mind and the body and the only way to integrate the mind and the body is through the breath through the spirit and that's why that when we see when we read creation as we were reading the bare sheath uh, our first Torah portion last week it testified of uh, God breathing life into the nostrils of Adam. And when he breathed that life into him, remember he had already created him as a, he had already given him a physical body. What he needed was to integrate his mind with that body, to integrate his soul with that body. So when he breathed the life into his nostrils, he became a living soul, meaning he became, he became engendered with, with, with energetic life principles. Okay, and we want to promote that energetic life principle, which was first promoted, promoted as God did through the breath, which he breathed into the nostrils of Adam. So we understand that the breath has a responsibility in integrating the harmony of the body and the mind. And that is revealed in the book of Genesis, which I was just testifying of. And when we begin to understand the responsibility of the breath, then all the knowledge of the ancients and the yogic system begins to make sense, okay? And also, our utilization of the holy herb, marijuana, begins to make sense. Because what the herb does is it has an effect on your autonomic nervous system. You have two, you have, you have your autonomic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system, all right? And your autonomic nervous system operates, uh, uh, it operates uh, in an unconscious reaction. For instance, right now, who's making your heart beat? Who, who's, who's telling what, what, what part of your conscious mind is, is, is called, causing your heart to beat? What, what part of your conscious mind is causing your lungs to, to breathe? What part of your conscious mind 
is, is balancing the pressure of your blood so that none of it begins to squirt from out of your skin. What, what, what is it that's doing that? This is your autonomic nervous system, which has a relationship with the cannabinoids found within the holy herb. And what it does is it allows for dialization, dilate, dilation of your, of your blood vessels. So when you have a blood vessel that is constricted, when it's dilated, it begins to open. And that's what the herb naturally does. Now when your, your, the constriction of your blood vessels begin to open, what does that mean? That means you have more oxygen passing through there. That means you have more nutrients, more minerals. Uh, you, have, you have more uh, blood cells, white and red passing through there. So that means that you have more of the life uh, essence being um, circulated through your being. And that also promotes and helps us to, 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 to be filled with that, with that life-giving essence of the Holy Spirit, okay? And the herb facilitates that life-giving essence of the Holy Spirit, blessing us to be uh, having a higher state of awareness and, and strengthening us to, to, to truly operate according to that spirit that is within us as we have uh, learned and testified of integrating the mind and the body through the blessing of the breath, okay? So when we run, and this is something I'm, I'm gonna do a video on to help give us a deeper knowledge of our exercise portion. When we run, uh, when you run, you naturally begin to make a relationship with the air around you. For instance, if you dip your hand in and out of water really, really fast, you'll recognize the water begins to spread and go everywhere. But if you do it in a specific fashion, paying close attention to the way in which you are interacting with that element, then you'll begin to realize that it's not as much splash, it's not as much of a mess that you're making everywhere. And that's the same way it is with the breath. When we breathe while we're running or exercising, we wanna do it in a fashion in which we are not constricting and we are not hindering the breath within our being. And when we begin to make a relationship with breath, then we unconsciously begin to train our lungs to operate without constricting the breath within us. And remember, the breath within us is that which supplies us with that life-giving essence. How many days can you go without food, brothers and sisters? How many days can you go without water? Now consider, how long can you go without oxygen? You can hardly go, uh, maybe a minute, maybe a minute. I know there's some real good swimmers out there and deep divers who can probably do up to five to six or seven, maybe maybe even more minutes than that. But we know when it comes to uh, uh, our our receptivity to the to the to, to life, it is truly dependent upon that 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 oxygen that that we find within our lungs, that oxygen that promotes the life giving essence within our being. Okay, so when we look at it from that perspective, understanding the use of the yogic system understanding the use of the holy herb and understanding the way it correlates to our fullness of being uh, but which is promoted through the breath then everything begins to make sense and then that which we know in spirit we begin to have an intellectual understanding of and that's why it's our responsibility for those who uh, who, who, who have been trotting this walk and have begun to fill their cups when your cup begins to fill it's your responsibility to spill he who knows should teach all right and we have to be willing to, to share this knowledge with each other so that we can begin to, 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 to draw each other towards the newness of life that we have perceived in the new name of His Imperial Majesty and Pride of Sebastian I. So I salute all of the I, and job willing, I and I will be back shortly with, 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 with more informative things that help us to affirm our intimate union with the Almighty, along with the disciplines, the principles, and the practices that affirm the intimate union. I give thanks and praise.